Before I start this video, before we say anything, yes, I will do the intro and welcome back, yada yada. But this video is sponsored by, I'm joking, we don't have sponsors, all right? We don't have a lot, but we work with what we got and we appreciate and love what we got, which is you, my viewer. So I appreciate all the support. Shout out to Astro the Guad, all right? All the way from Cali. Thank you for the super thanks. I appreciate it, my brother. You keep me motivated. And shout out to, shout out to Nafiu Hassan, okay? AKA the king of Google AdSense, all right? Tap in with him all the way from Bangladesh. Thank you for sponsoring. I appreciate you guys. If anybody sends a super thanks, you don't have to. Again, this is all for free. And I don't curse, I don't I don't say crazy stuff, so hopefully we'll keep it uh monetized. So I don't need no, you know, I don't get a lot of views. But again, this helps and, and I appreciate it deeply. So if you do, I owe you a shout out. All right, let's get this party started. This party of education, of course, and knowledge and wisdom. Let's get this amazing story on a go. You are now watching AK Debris on YouTube. Welcome back to the house of knowledge, wisdom, evolution, and revolution. Make sure to click the like button, smash the subscribe button, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Get comfortable, grab a bottle of water, and back to you, AK. This is Hannah, AK Debris, London. Welcome back to the house of knowledge, wisdom, evolution, and revolution. It's your boy, the one and only, AK Debris. I'm glad you guys liked the first story. I know I did myself too. Uh, that's why I'm I'm covering it. Shout out to Izzy for the great research, the excellent research on that fantastic piece. If you haven't watched the part one of this story, which is the story of uh, Shadow Crew and Carter Planet, I really recommend you go watch it beforehand. Um, it is equally as exciting. No, actually, no, I take that back. This is more exciting, more interesting. And um, this time around, we're looking at the people, not the website, okay? The first tale, it was the tale of how the website came to be, Shadow Crew, how to, um, the rise and fall of them. But this time around, we're going to be talking about the people, not the website. The story will, like, because obviously the people's story is also the website story. But when the website ended, the people's story didn't end. And that's what we're looking at here today. So let's get right into it. Why even talk about Albert and Brett. I believe these two men share some interesting similarities and are worth looking at side by side. See, Brett was responsible for Shadow Crew's creation, its birth. However, Albert? Albert is responsible for his demise, its downfall. But let's start with Brett. Shadow Crew was taken down by the Secret Service and FBI on October 26th, 6th, try to say that with me, 6th, 6th, it's a funny word to say, but moving on, the Shadow Crew admin, admins were brought together uh, uh, by Albert Gonzalez. This meeting would be used by the government to ensure that the members were actively committing a crime before the raid. See, they don't want to get them when they're chilling on the couch. You feel me? 
uh, 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 smoking a hookah out, out in Russia, okay? Rolling up a blunt down in the USA, you feel me? All right. Uh, shotgunning a beer down in Canada or, or eating uh, and sipping. Uh, no, not lean, but rather tea and crumpets out in the UK. The government wanted the raid to happen at a moment when everybody had their computer open, was locked in on Shadow Crew, and that's when they come kicking in, okay? Because they want to get them when the, not when the laptop, not when homie, like I said, is chilling with you down the block, all right? Rolling up a blunt, telling you, uh, flexing a bunch of money. No, no, no. And his laptop is all encrypted? No, they can't have that. They got to prove it. So they had Albert set up a, 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 a sting operation, which is how I ended the last video. Like I said, go watch if you haven't. And that's when the feds and, and, and Secret Service and a bunch of agencies, because this was a worldwide takedown. This didn't just happen in the US or whatever. They coordinated this amongst many countries at the same time. That's how they done what they did. So, Brett Johnson had dodged that raid. Because see, Brett Johnson, AKA Gollum Fun, that's the username. He had conveniently retired in April that year. See, Brett was not arrested during that raid. But that don't mean he was off the hook, okay? They still wanted him. So he took off, and that's how we ended the last video, as we said. He did the take He did the race, okay? He wasn't trying to rap on a beat. He was trying to do the race. I forgot how the song go. Yeah, he wasn't trying to rap on a beat. He was trying to beat a case. <laughs> All right? When they shut down Shadow Crew, he said, I got to do the race. So he took off. He was already paranoid because when the documents from T-Mobile leaked that showed that there was a secret service uh, 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 operation to take down Shadow Crew with informants, on top of that, he was, he was the admin on the site so he could see government IP addresses logging into his thing. So he had taken a retirement, but like I said, he wasn't off the hook. So he takes off on the run, but no matter how much you take off on a run with, you see, you're going you gonna to need some money to survive. So he begins looking for ways or new ways to make money. With Shadow Crew and Carter Planet gone, okay, and the community filled up with feds, he didn't know who he could trust online. All right? The days where you can't tell a ripper from an official dude, you know, they, sh they, shut, they shut the site down. He's on a run, so he don't know who to talk to. Paranoia in the air. You don't know who's an undercover. So... Homeboy turned to a, 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 like SpongeBob says, good old reliable tax fraud. All right. He's on a run. He's going to need a little bit of money. Got to run it up. That's the play. So tax fraud was also off the table because it was late October. Hmm. What does Brett do now? He finally lands and decides to go ahead and bust down a check, a fake cashier check. And that became the play. He's initially successful and is able to fund his lifestyle and relationship with his soon to be fiance while on the run. This type of fraud, however, 
needs to be done on a move. And Brett, prioritizing his relationship. Yeah, Brett was simping back in the day, okay? See, he's not simping no more. I watched his interview with Matt Cox. And uh, yeah, back in the day, he self-admittedly was uh, was a simp, okay, if you will. Uh, a, 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 a simp for the ladies. And the thing about dropping checks, especially like cashier checks or whatever he was doing, and, and, and especially their type of method back in the day, right? They're not dropping it on some online stuff, you know? Back then, they had a check. They had to go on some, um, like the movie, Catch Me If You Can. He walk into the check casting spot and cash that, bust down the check the right there and then. Fake IDs and all. But... You see, when you bust down a check, right? That's you got to understand. That's a federal crime. That's bank fraud. That's check fraud. All type of stuff. So usually they're gonna investigate, right? And when they go down to the spot, yo, who did that? I don't know. This is the info we got. You know. Let's check the cameras. What do you look like? He in the area? So. If you move in city to city, state to state, okay, you got better chances of getting away with it. But if you're just sitting down trying to simp for Miss Lady over here, all right, trying to be Romeo and Juliet, all right, unfortunately, <laughs> ain't no Juliet. <laughs> you, you, nah, bro. You, you be too busy trying to do Romeo and Juliet when you should be looking for. A Bonnie and Clyde, okay? You're on the run for arguably the most wanted. He actually did make America's Most Wanted. He did. I am not sure, but I think I read somewhere he was the most wanted man in America at some point. Moving on. So Simpin got him stuck in one place. Ine inevitably, this inevitably leads to his arrest in Charleston. No, not Charleston White. Charleston, South Carolina. February 8th, 2005. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Simping. See, see, that's why, man, you know, I'm not I'm not a red pill dude, man, but at the same time, like, okay, a lot of y'all be chasing the 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 kitty cat, if you will. Alright? Y'all be chasing the ladies. And uh and uh and uh, y'all be sleepwalking. Like, I guess, see, that's the power of the cat, alright? He's on the run. You know what I'm saying? America's most wanted, but at the same time, he's trying to do with Bonnie and Juliet, Bonnie and Clyde or whatever. By the way, not that it's relevant to this info, but just between me and you as a man, you want to know what she did, Shorty? Shorty dip. See, a lot of y'all be in the streets doing your thing, right? Swiping, trapping, whatever you do, getting your money. You know what I'm saying? But instead of taking care of your family or your kids, or at least, I'm not, I don't recommend crime at all. I'm just saying, I see, I'm just, you know, I'm speaking on the reality. A lot of y'all too busy trying to buy a Gucci belt, a Louis belt, okay? Uh, Christian Dior, all right? Amiri jeans, all right? Purple jeans, all right? Y'all too busy uh, 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 dripped out in Balenciagas, okay? You got the, you got the, what was it? What Fat Joe say? The... <laughs> Yo, excuse me, I gotta pull this out for you. He said something crazy. One second. I'm gonna pull this out. It's important. I gotta say this. <laughs> Hang on. I had to pull it out. He said he got a back case of the bees. Balenciaga. <laughs> he said, I got a back case of the bees. 
Can't play it for you because copyright, but that's what Fat Joe said. Point is, you're doing all of this with the money and, 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 and you say you got a girlfriend now. You feel me? She, okay, cool. She wouldn't have give you no play if you didn't have money. All right, just think about that. So when you trick it off on these females, all right, it is what it is, bro. Just just keep, be mindful, all right? Because you see here, Shadow Crew guy, Brett, he did it all for shorty. He explains more in his personal interviews how he how he tricked off and his all of that. But when the tough got to being tough, all right, he found himself uh, alone. Something to think about. That's all it is. Shortly after his arrest, he is visited in jail by the Secret Service. Oh, boy. And he agrees to work with them if he can see his fiance. Brett, steady simping, bro. Like, Brett, you... He changed. But down, super... I don't think that word is against community guidelines, no? This ain't Twitch. This is YouTube. He spends three months in jail before being released on bond into the care of the federal agents. Mm-mm, mm-mm-mm. Tekashi. All right. The agents pay for a hotel room for Brett. And at a Walmart nearby, he spent his last $30 on a prepaid debit card. Mm. Broke. Brett is brought to a field office in Columbia, South Carolina to fulfill his end of the deal and now work for the Secret Service. All the while, mm, 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 mm. guess what? Brett said, yeah, I'm coming. I'm going to Takashi for you. I'm going to Takashi 6 9 for you. I'm going to tell and work with y'all. Whole time, that $30 debit card he had, you see? <laughs> they took the hustler at the site, but they can't take the, 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 the hustle and the site at the hustler. You understand me? My boy took that 30 loaded up by the de prepaid debit card, Work with the Secret Service. Okay, Brad doing his thing. Whole time though, he got that debit card on him. It's time to swipe and commit tax fraud behind their back. Mmm, holla. That boy. Now, if you didn't know, this type of fraud is done by filing fake tax returns with the IRS. Typically, for a recently recently deceased person, a dead person. So they will buy what's called a profile, or basically name, uh, full name, address, info, uh, social security number, SSN. If you're lucky and you plugged in, all right, don't ask me how I know, I just do my research. But if you're lucky and you plugged in, all right, your plug might have the, what you gonna call it, PDF credit reports, all right? I don't know if that was the game back then, but I'm just, I'm just uh, explaining for the sake of context here, okay? Obviously, <clears throat> me, AK, and my channel, AK Debris, and my team and associates and the brand do not recommend any dishonest behavior we do not encourage or recommend or or condone or enable any type of illegal behavior. I'm serious. I'm not just saying this a disclaimer. Straight up. All of these stories, there's a moral and message behind them. So don't get lost in a pursuit of easy money. Remember when I covered uh, uh, Joker Stash, the billionaire? He made a billion dollars. But he was on a run from the Interpol. 
But he tell you, don't get lost in the pursuit of easy money. Pay attention. So they buying dead people pros or profiles. Some returns are approved faster than they are investigated. And the criminal makes away with the IRS's money. A check from the IRS. The tax return. Old, old scheme, all right? This is 2005 here. Brett was assigned to work four to six hours under the watch of two Secret Service agents. Like the president. <laughs> they walk around here. Yep, Secret Service, man. Can't talk to him. And a member of the South Carolina PD. Seems like he had a... I don't know why he had the, the police dude. Was he an internship? Maybe he just wanted to learn about hacking. Or maybe Secret Service couldn't be bothered to watch or hang out with the boring hacker nerd dude all day. Who knows? Those hours would be spent finding targets online, showing the agents how he would lure the target. Damn, grimy. Grimy, grimy, grimy. And ultimately, take their money. His actions were recorded by screen capture and key logging software. That's the government computer. Now, this is a question for the viewers, all right? I know a lot of y'all good people, and I don't condone stealing at all. Never, never that. But inquiring minds want to know, hypothetically speaking, I know somebody in my viewers, in my viewer base, have shop, shoplifted. I hypothetically, allegedly, imaginary, just once, as a kid, I was around the wrong people. I say that to say, not proud of it. Definitely would never, ever do it. If my kid do it, I will discipline him. So again, I only say that to say, if you're one of those people, or you even thought or entertained the idea, okay, we all have a shadow mind. Okay, we're human. The existence of a security camera usually is not really a deterrent for you, especially if, uh, especially if you're doing what you're doing for a, like a survival thing. Especially if you're like shoplifting to, you know, eat basically. How you would justify it probably to yourself is, man, nobody's checking that camera. Ain't nobody checking that camera for a bag of bread or chips, okay, or a Kit Kat or a Bounty. I don't know if they have Bounty nowadays or, or, or what was it? You know, a Kinder Surprise. Nobody's checking a security camera for that. So they don't look at it much. That's how you would think. Brett, over here, on a goddamn secret services computer that knowingly, <laughs> they tell them, it got a key login software, and again, screen capture, all right? Not by, not, by, not by your teachers in school in computer class, not by your employers at work, all right? By the secret service. Yet, he justified it to himself. He said, nah. I'm good. They're not going to audit this information. They're not going to audit this screen capture stuff regularly, my keystrokes. According to Brett, after about a week or two, two weeks, the agents became less attentive and even started watching. I can't even say it on YouTube. They was watching... Uh, 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 
the hub. Okay, they were watching humans try to reproduce. <laughs> oh, the... They're human. So our boy said this gave him enough confidence. Not only to watch the hub too, because I'm sure, you know, what fiance just left, dude, down bad. Mm. No OnlyFans at the time either. He couldn't go get him some custom content. Okay. <laughs> so what he do is, he said, okay, it started off like that. Next thing you know, he said, hey, man, I'm going to go get me some money. So he started committing the tax return fraud, but not from the crib. No, not from the hotel. No, not from the halfway house. No, not, not that either. Some people be getting money in jail and in the feds, like a federal prison. Some people be getting money on the inside. We all know, you know, seen, heard it a million times. But no, he didn't do that either in jail. AK, what? What are you talking about, AK? What, where did he do it then? You won't believe this. Hold on, let me take my breath. Let me hit the vape and get my water in. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He started committing tax return fraud from within the Secret Service's own office. Yes. Believe that? His work with the feds would continue, though, until March of 06. Another man named Sean Mims. Another man named Sean was arrested for a familiar crime. You know, some similar. All right. They got some in common. A little tax fraud. You know, some not, not too crazy. Brett was the one who taught Sean. He put him on on how to commit this fraud back in the Shadow Crew days. So when Brett first began working for the Secret Service, his old homeboy, Sean, came up, reached out. But he ain't know what's going on. All right? This put a target on Sean and led to his eventual arrest. The Secret Service now turned to Brett and asked him to take a polygraph test or be sent to prison. They are looking at him funny now, they are looking at him sideways. They had three questions for him. Mm, 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 mm. Has he used the computer outside of the office? Has he contacted or warned anyone about the investigation? All right. Are you telling somebody that you're telling? Has he contacted the press, the media? All right. Did you tell AK to bring on YouTube some, some extra? Hmm? We don't want him making a video talking crazy. All right. <sighs> mm, 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 mm. But a polygraph, if you didn't know, that's a lie detect, a lie detection test, detector test, right? So they ask him these questions under the lie detector test. I'm guessing Brett didn't study for that test though, because he failed. Brett fails the polygraph test. Judd says, mm, boy, I have some hope for you, but the bond is revoked. Back to jail you go. You locked up, they won't let you out. They won't let you out. Locked up, they won't let you out. Oh. I don't know if Akon was around, but he goes back to Charleston White. I mean, Charleston, Carolina. But he refuses to cooperate with law enforcement any further. He said, God, what? I spent all day on y'all computer. We watched the hub together. Y'all gonna put me back in a box, in a bin? I'm done. Not a good thing to do from a legal point, all right? Not, I'm no street dude, so I'm not gonna be like stitching or snitching. I'm just, 
unbiasedly looking at this. For if I was your lawyer, I tell you, hey, bah, huh? You need to cooperate, huh? You got a Rico surfacing over your head for running the biggest cybercrime site known to man in 2005. What's wrong with you? <sighs> Lawyers probably had a face bomb on, but God was on his side that day. See, lucky for luckily for Brett. All right, a judge was looking a little closer. He had the eye, uh, you know, the eye emoji with the one glass eye. He was he was double checking in his case document, but he finds that um his bond was improperly revoked, and without the Secret Service being informed, guess what? Homeboy is able to walk out of jail. Brad Johnson. Yeah, the dude, the dude who started the site. Yeah, it's time, it's time for you. You, it's time for you to go home. Release. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm talking from like within jail. Don't ask me how I know. Again, I'm just hypothetical imagination stuff. <laughs> oh, Lord. For the next four months. Brett decides to hit the road. All right? He is not a little baby. No, he's not. All right? He's not AK Debris. No, he's not. All right? He's not, uh, what's his name? I forget. But he's not a rapper is what I'm trying to tell you. Brett Johnson, he's not a rapper or artist. However... He decides to go on tour, not a music tour, a scam tour. He travels the country committing tax fraud for the next four months, all right? Running up in ATMs with fake cards, duplicates. ka -ching! He was still over 600,000 during this time. He ran up 600 bands, 600 bands. Oh. Over half a milli. But of course, you know, we're talking about the dude who told himself or convinced himself it was okay to run it up from within the Secret Service office. So as smart as he is, he may be computer smart, but he's not life smart, maybe at the time at least. Because moving sloppy, okay, Simping for these females, all right? Uh, yeah, his repercussions for his actions, you know, they were piling up. They were quickly catching up, up to him. Quickly. Not only was he one of America's most wanted, because now the Secret Service is like, hold on, you let him go? How you let him go? This the big... Bruh, that's like... He was, it's like the dude who made Silk Road years before Silk Road. It was that big, all right? So now they're catching up. They're like, all right, well, let's go get him, check on him. Homeboy is going to tour. Not only was he one of America's most wanted, but reports of his work with the Secret Service had reached the online fraud community. Mm. And Gollum Fun was exposed as a snitch. God. Now he can't even shop for cars no more. Nobody going, oh, Lord. I mean, what you expect? Brett's run takes him from Charleston all the way to Las Vegas. Mm -mm -mm. Time to bar. He at the casino. And then finally, back to Orlando, Florida. He decided the best way to spend his fortune would be purchasing a timeshare in Orlando. And uh, uh, he went a little bit bothering too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this one, next one here, he spent... 
30,000 mm, on furnishing alone with annual passes to Disney World and Universal Studios. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought my house was nice. I barely spent... I spent less than... <laughs> okay, I'd say about two bands over a year and some change when I furnishing and I had to run and get my own furniture. Before that, all I had was a mattress. <laughs> and I thought I was boiling. 30000 on it. Furniture, just furniture. Wow. Them YouTube checks not coming fast enough, huh? Y'all need to send me a super thanks, all right? Appreciate y'all, man. Love y'all. You don't have to. Uh, so, 30000 we said he would visit the parks every day. He was on some old man time and wanted to enjoy the fresh air, tired of computers. So he'd be at the park every day. Until one day. That day is on 2006, September the 16th. September seems to be a bad month for him because that's when Shadow Crew got shut down. All right, I don't even keep up with the calendars like that, but. Every time September comes for Brett, some crazy is going on with him. All right? He's on a run. So September come this time, he's tracked down and arrested by law enforcement. America's most wanted dude, cyber criminal, is in custody. And he would remain in prison for the most part. Dude is crazy again. We're talking about homeboy wild back in the day. All right, people was different, bro. Even the men, how people think, this was no soy boy era. No disrespect to nobody. But people had a little bit more warrior spirit. All right? Not trying to justify anything anybody did. I'm just describing it to you to paint a picture. Because this picture here, all right, homeboy just got locked up. He knows he just messed up, you know, doing busting uh busting down taxes from uh, uh the Secret Service office with the Secret Service IP off their computer, failing the test, freeing up by mistake, and then doing a run, knowingly becoming the most wanted, but while on a run, most wanted, running up 600 bands. All right, not being low key trying to survive with it, 600 bands. No, I'm talking about going to the park daily. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Orlando, you feel me? Disneyland, all right? Whatever you want, we got it. All right, 30 bands on the couch, you feel me? He was, yeah, he was like the biggest stunner. All right, Birdman got nothing on him at the time. And he's on the run the whole time. But again, I was just trying to say he is crazy in that sense because a dude like that, all right, if being in a secret service office wouldn't scare you away from running up some bands off of fraud, then being in, in, in jail, it's hard to keep a man like that down. At the time, he's changed now. So he escapes. Yep, he escapes jail. Yep. Yes, he did. But he was quickly captured and served his time until being released in 2011. I don't, I didn't, um, there not much research on his escape. Maybe in the future I'll cover it. But you can look it up. He does a good job. He's a funny dude to, to, to talk. I don't mess with him. I don't like white hats. And I don't do any crime, but I don't enjoy white hat hackers. No. Something about him gives me a, 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 a bootlicker vibe. No offense, Brett. But, uh, and I'm happy to see that you've um, you know turned your life around. Because after being released in 2011, he's now turned his life around. 
He now works as um, a cybersecurity advisor, a legal job, which is good, a motivational speaker. And may I add my own opinion? I think he's actually really funny, all right? He talks very funny, and he, uh, he describes stuff very funny. Reminds me of myself a little bit, all right? And he is my colleague. No, not on fraud. I don't do fraud, Nick. I don't do fraud. Oh, I got a sensor again. Oh, boy. I don't do F, all right? I'm talking about he's a YouTuber as well. And unless you want him going back to that life, all right, I advise you guys to go subscribe to him and, and, and spread the love, all right? So go support him and check out his channel. He's not even talking about hacking or fraud. He's just talking about uh, uh, losing weight, uh, uh, eating healthy, just going through old mass stuff, which I enjoy, to be honest, because it's not like I'm getting any younger. So I look up to dude and I respect his, his turnaround, a positive turnaround. What I can deduce from this is, you know, sometimes, and I find I notice this in myself, and I, I don't like to call myself smart. I'm not, I don't like to say that about myself, but objectively, unbiasedly speaking, I am more intelligent than the average person. So you can say I'm smart, okay? Depends who you ask. But I never let it get to my head because that's why I, didn't, I don't call myself smart because when you tend to kind of have that grandiose, you know, narcissistic self uh, image right there where it's like, yeah, I'm smart. I'm smart. If you tell yourself that, you're going to find yourself in horrible situations because you thought you're smart. I tell myself I'm dumb. I tell myself every day I still have a lot to learn, and that makes my life fun. What I'm trying to say is, Brett, in my opinion, is very smart, very intelligent when it comes to computers. When it comes to life, listen, me and Brett, <laughs> we struggle with the lit. I ain't going to say I struggle. I don't struggle in the sense of uh, uh, satisfying, okay? All right? That, trust me, ladies, monetarily speaking, financially speaking, and boom, boom, pow, all right? I lay it down. Just know that, all right? Ain't no problems there whatsoever. I got good reviews. If there was a Yelp review for that, trust me, I'd have a five-star plus one extra. I'm just trying to say we're all human and nobody's perfect. So even though he's a super intelligent knowledgeable, savvy dude, self-educated on many fields. Like he made a whole website, a forum, you know, he's computer smart. He's maybe fraud smart, but I guess he told himself that and he started to believe it too much to the point where he got so bold and started doing uh, uh, stuff that are, let's be honest, not very smart. Okay, let's just keep it a hundred. Doing fraud in the in the in the Secret Service uh, uh, office. Not only in the office, you're not doing it on your phone or on your lappy with a VPN or a proxy. Nah, you're doing it on their own computer that you know that they tell you. You know it has screen capture. It had a um, what's you, what you gonna call it? Keylogger. What do you say to that? I don't know, but he learned his lesson and uh, he's doing positive, so I can't fault him for it. I'm just telling you as the viewer. Brett Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, the founder of Shadow Crew. Uh, it's a movie called Hacker 2016. It's based on, indirectly, but it's based on him and his story, Shadow Crew. It's a good watch if you want to give it a chance. I recommend. Uh, my friend Johnny, me and him, that's our favorite movie. 
All right. Wow. That was heavy. That was heavy. What a story. <laughs>